At S2020, on behalf of my co-investigators, I presented Abstract 656. This is a phase 1B study um, looking at safety, efficacy, and PROs, or patient report outcomes, in patients that received venetoclax in combination with azacitidine. Uh, we had previously presented the early safety and early uh, efficacy in uh, ASH 2019. Dr. Andrew Way presented that data, where we saw encouraging safety profile and uh, promising uh, overall response rate and survival. And here we present the update, plus include patient report outcomes, which is in particular very important um, as our patient population, for those with higher risk MDS, uh, they often have um, symptomatic burden such as fatigue. Uh, most of them are largely older and have largely incurable disease. So making sure that our treatment does not impact quality of life and in fact increases quality of life is uh, paramount. So we, ex uh, we were able to take a look at patient reported outcomes on an exploratory level. So here in this abstract, we present patients, uh, 78 patients that received combination azacitine plus venetoclax. Um, and we, in particular, highlight the 51 patients of the 78 that received uh, treatment at the recommended phase two dose. The recommended phase two dose um, will be venetoclax 400 milligrams days one through 14 on a 28 day cycle with standard dose azacitidine um, at 75 mg per meter squared days one through seven. The objectives of the study include safety and then secondary objectives include uh, looking at response and survival. Exploratory objectives include looking at patient report outcomes following the ERTC uh, quality of life questionnaire core. And so um, patients that were included in this study notably had to have higher risk MDS, and this was defined as patients with an IPSS score of 1.5 or higher. Um, they could not receive prior MDS therapy, and patients that had therapy-related disease or overlap syndrome were excluded. So of the 78 patients that received combination therapy, uh, we note that uh, the IPSS cytogenetic uh, risk of these patients uh, are uh, pretty uh, interesting. 22% had intermediate risk cytogenetics, 39% had poor risk cytogenetics. And when we take a look at the IPSS categorization, 73% had intermediate two disease, 27% had high risk disease. As we know, the IPSSR can uh, delineate these risk, strat uh, risk stratification um, better uh, based on the weight for our chromosomes. We were able to see that with IPSSR, classification, 26% had high-risk disease and 56% had very high-risk disease. Um, most of our patients command study had baseline cytopenias. When we, took a, when we uh, took a look at the AEs among the patients that received uh, the combination therapy, we noted that most events were either GI or are, uh, cytopenias, and importantly, grade three or four events were all cytopenic, with febrile neutropenia occurring at, at 49%. Notably, because antibiotic prophylaxis was mandatory uh, during cycle one of treatment, which is when patients, uh, most patients had their most profound nadir um, that did mitigate uh, serious infection events. And so, although the febrile neutropenia rate was 45% uh, in terms of SAE, um, only 6% had pneumonia and 5% had diverticulitis, suggesting there is a way for us to mitigate risk. Further, as noted, uh, recommended phase two dose is venetoclax 400 milligrams days one through 14. So having the two weeks off of therapy in the cycle did allow for recovery hematopoiesis and likely also further reduced uh, infectious rate. Um, overall, 95% of patients required a cycle delay and median time to next cycle is about 15 days. 55% um, of patients had uh, protocol required venetoclax dose interruptions based on AEs and 35% had uh, venetoclax dose reductions based on protocol uh, recommendations. Notably, a third of patients required um, greater than one, one, sorry, one or more azacitidine dose reductions per protocol. And because of these dose reductions that were allowed and um, provided by the protocol, it helped patients to stay on therapy and to not have serious events, further serious events. Um, the 30-day mortality was uh, 1%. Um, in terms of the uh, response rate, this recapitulated what Dr. Wade presented in 2019, but we did see an objective response rate that was robust at 79%, including 40% with CR, 40% with marrow CR. When we took a look at patients that received uh, treatment at the recommended phase two dose, again, this is 51 patients, 84% had an objective response rate, and that includes 35% with CR and 45% with uh, marrow CR plus hematologic improvement. 
The median time response was two and a half months. Two thirds of patients became transfusion independent, which is huge for quality of life. And 21% went on to receive a transplantation because they became eligible later. The median time on study was about 16 and a half months. And importantly for patients true with the combination, the median overall survival was 27 and a half months. But for those that were on the recommended phase two dose, uh, this has not yet been reached. And so we look forward to seeing what the long-term follow-up shows for patients. But so far, there's indication that the treatment effect is durable, patients could stay on therapy, and that there appears to be uh, a really nice survival uh, for patients that receive treatment at the recommended phase two dose. Uh, when we take a look at overall survival, survival based on responses, as expected, patients that got a CR or marrow CR with hematologic improvement, um, they had the longest survival compared to others. When we took a look at patient report outcomes, and this is the first time we've reported this, we see that there is improvement uh, in dyspnea and fatigue. The improvements were largest among those that achieved a complete remission, but importantly, they were durable, um, observed as early as cycle three and persistent at cycle 13. We took a look at physical functioning as another PRO, and it was maintained uh, for patients on study that suggest tolerability. Um, and when we took a look at global health status or quality of life, we, we noted improvements, and, and impressively, the improvements continued even at um, cycle 13, which is when we saw the biggest change of quality of life. So here we present the safety and preliminary efficacy, encouraging early survival for our patients that arguably looks to be better than what might be expected with azocytic data alone, but this was not a randomized study. And so a phase three trial called Verona um, is um, launching that will recruit patients with higher risk MDS to evaluate safety of F and efficacy of venetoclax plus azacitidine versus placebo plus azacitidine with a goal to change standard of care or to improve upon it.